Hey there, it's Steve from Serious Keto, and this is the Not So Serious Keto video podcast. In this episode, I'm going to talk about some of the exciting things, exciting for me anyway, that I'm working on for the Serious Keto channel, including some of the ups and downs of working with affiliate marketing partners. I'll answer one or two frequently asked questions, and then we will pick up on a topic that we started last week, which is some of the unexpected side effects and or benefits that we've experienced after going on keto. I really kind of debated whether or not I should share this first bit. On the one hand, I'm really excited about it, but I don't necessarily want to get everybody's hopes up, but I'm really excited about it. So I'm going to share it anyway and just, you know, keep our fingers crossed. I've talked in the past about how I get approached probably twice a week from various companies that want to form some sort of promotional arrangement with me, whether it's using their product or doing some other kind of promotion or marketing type deal or giveaway or things like that. And to the vast majority of them, I say no. A lot of them are just not a real natural fit or they're not products that I personally believe in or would purchase myself. Now in sort of a stroke of good luck, last week I did that video on the cookies and cream uh, fat bomb bar, crunch bar. I'll link to it up here if you didn't see it. And I used some Chalk Zero white chocolate chips in it, and Chalk Zero saw that video. Someone must have told him about it. And we had a little conversation in the comments section. I asked if they had an affiliate marketing program, and I got some contact info, and I'm waiting to hear back from them. And that got me thinking. Are there other companies whose products I use, whose products I enjoy, cooking products, not supplements or prepackaged keto food, but products that would be used in the videos and that usually I link to out on Amazon that we could go straight to the actual producer, like Chalk Zero, and get some sort of a discount versus what you would pay on Amazon. And the companies that I've reached out to so far are Flavor God. They make some amazing seasonings, very clean, clean keto, good stuff. Bocha Sweet. Yeah, I found out that's how you pronounce it. It's Bocha Sweet. I love their sweetener, but it's kind of expensive. And if we can get some sort of a discount on that, then that's a product I could see myself using a lot more in videos. And the final one is Anthony's Goods. I use a lot of their product. They make basically anything that you might use in keto baking. And I think a relationship with them would be pretty cool. So I've tried reaching out to all of these. I'm waiting to hear back from all of them. I think with the current situation going on, probably their focus is a little bit more on production and shipping rather than you know creating some sort of an affiliate marketing partnership with me. But hopefully we will hear back from them soon and then I can start getting you guys some discounts on these products. And if you have any connections at any of these four companies and can maybe accelerate this or put me in contact with somebody, that would be fantastic. I would ask that you not give me any suggestions for other companies down in the comments below. I want to save the comments for the end part when we start talking about keto side effects and benefits. As time goes on, I'm sure I'll look at other companies that might be interesting to have affiliate marketing partnerships with. My criteria are basically going to be, is it something that benefits my viewers? Is it something that I use to make food? And, as always, is it a product I would pay my own money for? What I don't see myself adding in terms of a marketing partnership is any more prepackaged keto foods. I've already got a relationship with Perfect Keto, and I'm happy with that. I don't see myself really wanting to add anybody else. I do wonder sometimes how much longer Perfect Keto is going to tolerate me saying no to them. It sort of started when they would ask, can we send you a box of something for you to try out? And I think to try out is sort of code word for do a video review on. And I would say no. I just, I'm uncomfortable reviewing something that's given to me for free. In my mind, it creates sort of a conflict of interest. So I tell them no, and then usually they wind up shipping something anyway. But lately, they don't even ask. They just send me something. And they sent me their new peanut butter cookie, which is being released today. And they said, can you do a video on it? And I said, no, because we just did this 35% off sale last week. I'm not going to do perfect keto promos like every week. That's just, that's not my bag. So they will send out 
marketing material and like literally a, a script sometimes, you know, here's what you should say, here's what you should put in your description. And I just am not the sort of person that likes being told what to do a whole lot, especially in terms of my channel. So I've told them if I'm going to do a video, I'm going to do it my way. But now that I'm talking about this, I'm actually kind of curious about the peanut butter cookie. So this isn't going to be a review per se. Let's not call it a review. This is just Steve looking at a box and then tasting. So we've got the peanut butter cookies, peanuts, allulose, grass-fed butter, almond flour, erythritol, coconut flour, water, coconut oil, egg, acacia gum, grass-fed collagen, baking soda, psyllium husk powder, sea salt. So pretty clean. Two grams of net carbs per cookie. So a total of four grams in a pack. There we go. It's good. I mean, it's not great. I think of their three cookies, I would probably place this third on, on my list. I mean, hands down, the chocolate chip is their best cookie. That is a great cookie. And I think their double chocolate is pretty good too, if you like, you know, sort of a chocolatey coconut flavor. This, um, you know, it's good, but I don't know that I would spend 20% of my daily net carbs on a packet of these. And if you're curious what it would look like if I read from their script, this is how it would go. So if you watch any other keto channels and you hear these words, you'll know that they came from Perfect Keto. Looking for some good news? Here's some fresh from the oven happiness. Perfect Keto is unveiling a scrumptious new snack, peanut butter cookies. Just like grandma used to make if grandma was a nutritionist. <laughs> They're everything a cookie should be. Soft, perfectly peanut buttery, and absolutely free of added sugars or junk. Also available in double chocolate and the classic chocolate chip, these delicious cookies are packed with 19 grams of high quality fats, 6 grams of protein from clean sources like collagen, and only 4 grams of net carbs per serving. Oh, and did I mention they're delicious? Because they are delicious. Want to see for yourself? Use my link in the description below to get up to 30% off your keto cookie order, plus free shipping, no code necessary. And if it seems like I'm making fun of Perfect Keto, I'm not, well, maybe a little, but I get why they send out the various things that they send out, the marketing information, the, the copy that they send for people to read or to put into their emails or descriptions or whatever. A business needs to both protect its brand and make sure that the messaging is consistent. So I get why they do this. And I'm sure for some channels, this is very helpful. They probably are like, oh great, I got a script. All I got to do is read this and we're good to go. But that's just not how I choose to do things. So I will include the link below. You can mix and match any of the cookies. Like I said, I like the chocolate chip a lot. If you missed the sale last week, or if you just didn't feel like buying five items to get the discount, you know, here you buy three boxes of cookies, you get 30% off if that's your thing. This is actually sort of starting to grow on me a little bit. It's not bad. One of the more common questions that I get asked from people is, what other YouTube channels do you watch? And I'm assuming they just mean like keto and health channels. I don't think they just mean in general. Or maybe they do. But I'm just going to answer sort of in terms of keto and health type stuff. The short answer is very little nowadays. When I first started keto, I really, really binged on a lot of content. So, like Thomas DeLauer and Eric Berg, Nick Zorowski, Keto Connect, those were sort of the biggies. I think I binge-watched the vast majority of their content. And I think it was one of those sort of things where, you know, once you watch so much of a given thing, you kind of, you know, just need to take a break from them for a while. So I kind of dialed back on watching a lot of those channels. In terms of keto cooking shows, I maybe watch one episode or video per week from somebody, partly because I don't want to be influenced by someone else. I want to come up with my own recipes and have my own ideas. I also never want to be accused of stealing someone else's ideas. And I think if you've watched any number of my videos, you know that I always give credit. Even if someone was just sort of an inspiration for an idea, I give credit. But for the most part, I prefer to come up with recipes on my own. So I don't generally watch other cooking videos. 
there are a couple of exceptions. One is I'll from time to time watch a video by Vernaz on her channel, Low Carb Cooking and Having Fun, because I sense a little bit of a kindred spirit in her. She's definitely got the whole mad scientist in the kitchen vibe that kind of drives me to create some of the things that I create. And that's why I enjoy watching her video. She does give me some pretty cool ideas from time to time. The other channel that I find just never fails to impress me is Hungry Elephant. She is such a good keto baker that I've pretty much resigned myself to not doing any keto baking videos, just because I know that I will not be able to achieve some of the things that she has. And she's done it already. So if people come and ask me a baking question or make a recipe request for something that's baked, probably what I'm gonna do is point them to Hungry Elephant. And I like the style of her videos too. They're that POV, you know, point of view, looking down at the food, seeing it made, kind of like tasty or I think yumly he makes videos this way. Very tightly edited, very professional. They're brief and to the point, unlike me sometimes. So I, those are, those are probably the two sort of cooking channels that I check out from time to time. And then, you know, I'll still, if I'm curious about, you know, something health related, my sources tend to be Dr. Eric Berg, Nick Sorowski, Stan Ekman. Those are sort of the major ones that I go to. As I think about it, there's another reason I don't watch a lot of other cooking videos is some of them are just so, so very long. There was one that I saw because I was curious about a pizza crust and the video was like 44 minutes long. As I scrubbed through with the little scroll bar down at the bottom, she spent 12 minutes with a rolling pin rolling out this pizza crust. There's a quote by Stephen King that goes, I think, the delete key on your keyboard is there for a reason. And I believe he said he deletes probably 60% of the words that he writes. I would say that I delete probably 80% of the total minutes of video that I record, if not more than that. So if you ever start thinking that my videos run a little bit long, and I always think that my videos run a little bit long, it's still significantly cut down from what it potentially could be. And now that I think about it, I've got one other pet peeve, and that is the commercials inserted into a video. So if you do a video that's more than 10 minutes, you can insert ads into the video. And I think you can insert up to three of them in a, in a 10 minute video, which to me just strikes me as very excessive. But then also, a lot of people don't put them at sort of natural breaks. They'll be like mid-sentence and then a commercial will pop up. So my promise to you is that I will never insert an ad in the middle of a cooking video. I will do them in the podcast somewhere right around the middle, which I think is going to be right about now. In the last podcast, I gave you all a little bit of a homework assignment, which was to spend this past week thinking about some of the unexpected side effects, and benefits of keto that you've experienced. And a number of you were pretty excited to share. In fact, I got a lot of comments from people sharing some of the benefits and side effects that they've experienced since going on keto. But I really want to put them in this video. I want to have them sort of consolidated in a place where I can look, where I can send people who are curious about keto and some of the benefits. I can say, just go look at the comments on podcast, whatever number this is. 16, 17, I'm not sure. One of the other reasons that I'm asking all of you to do this is I think a lot of us have experienced things but not really been aware of them, that they were necessarily keto or it's something that was so subtle that we didn't really think about until someone else says, oh yeah, I find that uh, my eczema went away. And then someone else with eczema says, wait, me too. I, I didn't even think about that. That was keto. Reading through your comments last week, I discovered that there were a number of things that I had experienced just and not been aware of myself. So to get started, some of the things that I have experienced as keto side effects. I mentioned this last week, my, my wedding band now has gotten so loose it practically falls off. When I got married, I think I was probably around 185, 190 pounds. I got up you know, as high as 230, and at 230, the ring just wouldn't come off. It was welded into me. Uh, I had a pretty 
pretty substantial groove in my ring finger from that. And now, you know, 70 pounds less than that, pretty loose. Might need to get that resized. The other sort of similar side effect, I'm not going to call it a benefit. I mean, the benefit is that you lose the weight. The side effect is you're going to need a new wardrobe. So I would tell anyone that's getting ready to go to keto, have a plan in place. Have a plan for your old clothes and start saving up for some new clothes. I'm kind of bummed. I had some pretty nice looking dress shirts that I was very fond of. And uh, they look like a circus tent on me now. This shirt right here, this used to have a slimming effect on me at 230 pounds. When I did part six of the My Transformation series, one of the side effects that I talked about is the absence of farting. I used to fart an awful lot, and now I don't fart much at all. And when I do, it's all bark and no bite, if you know what I mean. I've also largely quit sweating. And I'm sure some of that had to do with the weight, but I used to sweat just like crazy. I would sweat in my sleep. Uh, I would wake up in the morning and my bed, the sheets look like the Shroud of Turin. You could see my body imprint just in sweat on the bed. It was pretty gross. Sort of along those same lines, I also am not creating body odor anymore. This is really weird. Like I can not wear deodorant and I don't create a smell. I don't create a smell in my armpits. My feet don't stink. Um, any other places in the body that might create body odor, like not creating a smell anymore. So that's kind of wild. Anti-keto people often talk about keto breath. I have not experienced keto breath to my knowledge. In fact, sort of the opposite is going on. I used to wake up in the middle of the night with such a bad, funky, disgusting taste in my mouth like something crawled in there and committed suicide, I would wake up in the middle of the night and have to brush my teeth just so that I could go back to bed. Now I wake up, I don't have morning breath. I've also noticed too, my teeth just feel cleaner. I don't feel like I'm building up any sort of plaque or tartar. Sticking with the whole sort of mouth and breath theme, I used to get these, I call them throat nuggets. They are basically little nuggets of just foul smelling stuff that would get stuck kind of back in the tonsils. You know, I'd use my tongue to kind of, you know, get back there and, and pop them out. And if you've ever had one of these and you pop one out, for the love of God, do not s sniff them. It's just, it's horrible, horrible. I mean, just spit it out, something. It's, it's they're gross. And I used to get these. I, I had these all the time. I can't remember the last time I've had one. Certainly not since I've been on keto. One of the other things that I wasn't really aware of until it was brought up by someone who commented last week was skin tags. I had a few people tell me that their skin tags have gone away. And I used to have a couple. I had one in my armpit, gone. I just, I looked. I don't know where it went or when it went, but it's been within the last year that I've been on keto. I also used to have this weird sort of, wasn't really a skin tag, but sort of this sore on my leg. It sort of seemed like a cross between a pimple and a mole. It, it felt like something that should be poppable, but it wasn't poppable. If I sort of tried to mess with it at all, it would get inflamed and it's gone. I don't even, I, there's no scar there. There's nothing there anymore. And then probably the, the final thing that I've got from my list is just how much better every joint in my body feels. Prior to keto, I didn't know what inflammation was. And as I started binge watching people like Thomas DeLauer and he'd talk about inflammation, I'm like, huh, what? I, what's that? In a nutshell, it's just anything that has itis after it. So arthritis, tendonitis, tonsillitis. Itis means inflamed. So I had arthritis. My knuckles hurt badly. They would get very, very stiff as well. It felt like they were swollen up, puffy. My knees hurt. My whole body really kind of hurt. I just sort of took for granted that this is part of getting old. I would get out of a chair. Every time I got out of a chair, I would grunt or groan. I'd be like, Ugh. you know, like that shouldn't be hard to get out of a chair, but that's the way I felt. It wasn't until that pain went away that I really started understanding 
that's what inflammation is. So that's my list. Tell me what yours is. I'm sure you'll probably trigger some things for me and for other viewers. Put it down in the comments. And if you've experienced any sort of a bad side effect, let me know about that in the comments as well, especially if you had a solution for it, such as like taking electrolytes or pickle juice if you've got cramps. And that's it for this podcast. Thanks for watching or listening.